Rambam Mishnah Torah, one chapter a day, Kilaim, chapter four. Halacha one. It is permitted to sow two rows of zucchini next to each other, next to them two rows of squash, next to them two rows of Egyptian beans, provided there is a trench between each species. One should not, however, sow one row of zucchini, one row of squash, and one row of Egyptian beans, even though there is a trench separating between each species, because the leaves of these species grow longer, become extended and entangled. If they are sown on one, if they are sown on one row next to each other, everything will become intermingled, and it will will appear that he sowed the crops as a mixture. Halakha two. If a person's field was planted with types of vegetables, and he desired to plant several rows of squash in it, he must do the following. Rip up from the vegetables a place where he will plant a row of squash and separate between it and the vegetables with a trench. He then leaves a 12 cubit section of vegetables and plants a second row of squash, dividing between it and the vegetables with a trench. Similarly, he should follow this pattern until he reaches the place he desires. Thus, there will be 12 cubits between each two rows of squash. If there is less than this measure, it is forbidden, because the leaves will become tangled with vegetables between them on either side, and it will appear that he sowed the crops as a mixture. Halakha 3. When a person has a row of squash sown, or even one squash plant, and desires to plant grain next to it, he must leave empty a portion large enough to sow a fourth of a cove, for the squash plant's leaves have, have become extended and are considered to have taken possession of a large area. Any entity, example a grave, a rock, or the like, that exists within the, the area large enough to sow a fourth of a cove that is left empty, empty as a separation between these two species is considered as part of the measure. Halakha 4. When a, trench, when a trench or an irrigation ditch are a handbreadth deep, one may sow three types of plants within them, one on each edge of the trench and one in the middle. Halakha 5. It is permitted to sow two species in one pit, even zucchini and squash, provided that one is leaning above one side of the pit and the other leans above the other side and thus they appear separate from each other. Similarly, if one planted four species in a pit and pointed them to each of the four directions, it is permitted. Halakha 6. When a person desires to sow his field in many long rows of different species, he should make a separation of two cubits by two cubits at the beginning of the rows. He may then continually reduce the width of the empty space until, at the end of the rows, there is only the slightest amount of empty space between them. This is permitted because they do not look like, look like they have been sown, as a mixture. Halakha 7. If a person wants to plant his field in squares or different species, he should not plant more than nine squares in a large in a field large enough to sow a se'ah. Each square should be large enough to sow a quarter of a cove. Thus there will be approximately ten cubits minus a fourth of a cubit put between each square. For the area in which a se'ah can be sown is fifty cubits by fifty cubits. Halakha 8. What is the difference between the terms meshar and karachat? The former is long, and the latter is square. Halakha 9. The following principle, principle applies with regard to species of vegetables that, is, that it is not customary for a person to sow in large amounts, as we explained. It is permitted to sow even five types of these vegetables in one row, that is six handbreadths by six handbreadths, provided he sows four species at the four sides of the row and one in the middle. Having, leaving a handbreadth and a half between each species so that they will not derive nurture, derive nurture from each other. One should not, however, sow more than five species in a row, even if he makes an appropriate separation, because it appears that they are sown as a mixture. Halakha 10. When does the above apply? To a row planted in a ruin where there are no crops outside it. If, however, a row is planted among other rows of produce, it is forbidden to sow five different species. For if you will sow all four sides of one row, and all the sides of the rows around it, everything will appear as a mixture. If he caused the leaves of one row to lean to one side and those of the other row to lean to the other side so they appear distinct from each other, it is permitted. Similarly, if he makes a trench between each row, it is permitted. Halakha 11. It is forbidden to sow outside this row without a trench or without leaning the plants to the side. This applies even opposite the corners of the row in which there are no plants. This is a decree enacted lest one sow the four species in the four corners of the row, and sow other species outside of it, opposite the corners, and thus everything would appear mixed. Halakha 12. If the row was six handbreadths by six handbreadths, and it had a barrier, a 
handbreadth high and a handbreadth wide around it, it is per permitted to sow even 18 species within it, three on each barrier and six in the middle. One must separate a handbreadth and a half between each species. One should not sow a turnip in the midst of the barrier lest it fill it. He should not sow more than that. Halakha 13. It is forbidden to sow different seed plants in this manner, because they appear as kilain. More lenient laws apply to species of vegetables, since they, since people generally sow only small amounts of them, it is permitted to sow them in the manner explained above. Halakha 14 When there is a barrier a handbreadth wide and one sowed several species in it, as we explained, if the height of the barrier was reduced, it is still acceptable since it was acceptable at the time when it was originally sown. Halakha 15 when a person desires to fill his entire garden with different types of vegetables without making a separation between them, he should divide the entire garden into square rows, even six handbreadths by six handbreadths. He should then make five circles in every row, four of the four corners and one in the centre. He may sow a species of vegetables in each circle and one in the centre, and he may sow four other species in the four corners. Thus there are nine species in each row, and yet they appear separate from each other. He leaves empty only what is between the circles, this is left fallow so that the circles will appear distinct from the corners and distinct from each other. If he desires not to leave any empty space at all, he should do the following. If the crops in the circles are sown vertically, he should sow crops in the space left between them horizontally. If they are sown horizontally, he should sow in the space between them vertically so that they will appear distinct from each other. Halakha 16. From all of the above, the following principles become apparent for you. When there is sufficient space between two species so that they will not derive nurture, we are not concerned with the appearance as we explained. And when they appear separate from each other, we are not concerned with the fact that they derive nurture from each other, even if they are next to each other as we just explained.